we're almost there. We're going to just look at this equation from a different perspective. And notice that if I expand this summation in the following way, so I get a zero plus and now I substitute n equal to one into this equation here and I get this part and then e n equal to two and then n equal to three, so four and so on until n equals to n. Notice that I'm color coding here the frequencies that are inside of this cosine. And the reason why I'm doing that is because this frequency here, the first one when n equals to one, it's called the fundamental frequency. It's the frequency with most weight out of your Fourier series. All the other ones are called harmonics and you have the second harmonic, the third the harmonic, the nth harmonic, so far and so on. So your signal has a fundamental frequency plus a set of harmonics. Now, one cool thing that we can do out of this equation is that we can now, instead of being in time, we can go to a different domain, frequency domain, and I'm going to plot um, frequency into my x-axis and then the amplitude into my y-axis. So A0, the it's the DC component or your average value. There is no frequency for it, so it's the first um, point that you have here in this graph. Then you have A1 with the fundamental frequency, then A2 and the respective harmonic, so forth. Then you pl plot the rest until you, you plot all your harmonics, and this is what it's called an amplitude spectrum. You can do a similar thing, uh, and instead of plotting in your Y the amplitude, you can do the phase, and then you have your frequency zero with phase one, your second harmonic with phase two, so forth and so on, and you place all the um, frequencies with the respective phase, and you have what it's called a phase spectrum. So now we're looking at our Fourier series. Instead of in the time domain, we're looking in the frequency domain, and we have uh, what it's called the signature of your signal, that it's um, composed with amplitude and phase. So let's look at some examples. Let's pick up the waveforms that we used on the previous video, and I'm just going to use a couple of them. Let's start with the sinusoidal waveform. And now I'm going to plot frequencies into my x-axis and my amplitude into my y. And notice that I only have one Fourier coefficient, your um, b1, with the amplitude in this case of 3, and my frequency is 200. And notice now when I ch change the amplitude, what happens in this frequency domain? You just see the fundamental frequency, the amplitude of that changing. Now I can also change the DC component of it, which does not have any effect into your fundamental frequency and you're just shifting your wave up and down. Pretty cool. So you can also shift your fundamental frequency and you just see different frequencies here. All right, so let's see now our triangle wave. A triangle wave is a little bit more complex than the sinusoidal wave because we have more um, Fourier series, more Fourier coefficients, more harmonics also. So we have our fundamental here and then our third, fifth and seventh harmonic represented in our amplitude spectrum. And notice what happens when I change the amplitude. When I change the amplitude, it affects all the fundamental frequency and all the harmonics, but notice that it affects more the fundamental frequency. And then if I change the DC component, does not have any effect on your fundamental frequency and respective harmonics. And I can change my fundamental frequency and if I do that, all the harmonics are going to change accordingly to that fundamental frequency. And I'm changing here the DC part so you can see that does not have any implication on the rest of the signals. And um, that's it. This is going to be very important, this visualization in the frequency domain. Uh, later on when we apply filters to our signals, we can remove some of these um, harmonics or even the fundamental frequency, whatever a, a component you want to remove. This visualization is very important because it will allow you to see what it's left over after you apply the filters. Just one more note that your, what it's commonly known as FFT, this is not your FFT, but it's similar in uh, um, regarding to the fact that you are looking at the frequency domain and not at in or not in the time domain.